Up till recently, I had only seen only a couple of X-Men movies, and those were usually the latter ones with literally no context. So, with the release of Deadpool and Wolverine, then I wanted to go back and watch all of the X-Men movies, and uh, I wanted to give you guys my opinions on all of them. Um, firstly, I, w I do want to say I haven't actually seen Deadpool and Wolverine because it comes out next weekend uh, for when this recording happens. And so next Thursday, I will go and see it. And then you guys will get to see my uh, spoiler free review. But so this is not going to include Deadpool and Wolverine at all. I will also talk about the Deadpool movies at the end, but I don't consider the Deadpool movies to really be a part of the X-Men franchise. Um, so I, I'll cut, I'll talk about them, but I'm not going to, I'm going to talk about them at the end of the video. Um, I will have timestamps down below. So if you guys are interested on my thoughts on any particular movie, you guys can go and skip around down below. So, alrighty, let's start off with the very first one. The only one that was pre Sam Raimi Spider-Man is the X-Men, uh, or just X-Men, I guess that's the official title. Uh, but the X-Men, um, in this one, you know, watching this movie, you know, like this, the first trilogy, they were kind of meh to me. I, I had a really hard time being able to distinguish the three of them from each other, uh, just especially in, in memory now. Um, they're just so, they're so similar in a lot of ways. Um, but X-Men, like this is the one with like, you know, you've got Rogue uh, who comes across Wolverine and then they go to the Charles Xavier school and you know, then things kind of start kicking off. And these original first movies, they're just kind of fine. You know, um, you can really tell that they're kind of more or less embarrassed about them being superheroes and everything like that. Because like for me, like I don't, I've never read any of the comics. I kind of know some of the characters, mostly by powers, but it's really hard to distinguish who's who until they use their power. So like, uh, I think I think it was Iceman, he comes in in the second movie. Um, but there, there are some, th there are some characters where it's just like, who, who are you? You know, like, I, I don't like, what is your ability? I, th I think there's some where I just like see them doing something and I'm like, I don't, what are they supposed to be doing? You know, like, um, I had a, like, it took me a while to be able to really get what Jean Grey could do or to, you know, like, I was like, okay, I know this one's Cyclops, right? Cause he's got the glasses on, right? Um, you know, so I, I, I could recognize some of the characters, but they just really didn't make it that easy to kind of recognize things just because they, you know, they were just kind of embarrassed about it all. Um, and that's something that was re that's really great about more modern superhero movies is that they embrace the, the crazy wacky colors and the, the crazy costumes. And it looks really cool. Like if you see Wolverine in his yellow and black outfit, that looks cool. But it doesn't, like, but they didn't, and maybe they just couldn't make it look cool back then, you know? That's their fault, I guess. Um, the, next, the next one is X2. I keep forgetting the plot of this movie. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's just really a convoluted plot. And so a lot of the details just keep escaping. Um, and then I, I remember, I'm like, oh yeah, this is the one, this is the one where with Stryker and, um, and, you know, Logan starts to learn about more about his past and all that stuff. And I think they get captured in the underground facility and Jean Grey dies at the end. And it's like, whoa, you know, like, like but in all, in all reality, so little of it, I think has much impact that I just forget a lot of the stuff that happens. I even really, I kind of forget a lot of what happens in X-Men as well. Um, but yeah, it's just like this one, a lot of, I think, I think this one does introduce Iceman. I think maybe Pyro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Pyro gets in. No, or is that the third movie? Yeah, um, that's kind of what I mean by like I like they they blend together. It's it's hard to keep straight. Um, which movie has which plot points yeah i don't remember anyways uh on to the the last stand x-men the last stand this one out of the original trilogy i like this one the most 
and uh, for entertainment factor, but also I respect a lot of the decisions they made because they made a ton of really bold decisions. I know a lot of people don't like The Last Stand, but personally, you know, I think having like having the choice of killing off Cyclops, Jean Grey, uh, Professor X, and giving getting rid of Magneto's powers maybe uh, at the end, I think that was I, I I really respect going for the walls here, you know, and also having. You know, they have the mutant cure and the dark phoenix stories. Like, like they went for a lot here. And did it all work? Probably not. But I don't think any of the, like, I, th I think having a lot more that really stands out, like having the, the mutant cure and the dark phoenix storylines, like those really stood out. And having those together really helped The Last Stand actually stand out as a movie versus I barely remember what happens in X2 or X-Men. You know, I, I remember, yeah, because I remember X-Men has, uh, it's, it was focused around Rogue and Magneto needing Rogue. Uh, and then I remember in X2 that they had the other mind control guy, uh, Stryker's son. I remember those things. But then the last day, I'm like, okay, there's this, 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 and this, and this that I remember. And I'm like, so that those things really stood out to me. Um, so I think, I definitely think uh, X-Men United, or sorry, The Last Stand. I definitely think that one was the stronger of the three, just because there's a lot more going on. And there's, it's a lot more to, like, there's a lot more that stands out among the rest, especially when they don't really want to stand out, it seems like. Um, next up is X-Men Origins Wolverine. Obviously, this is a terrible movie. They absolutely butcher, butcher Deadpool in this movie. Like, it is just not even, like, uh, not even close. And uh, I watched this right before uh, watching Deadpool 2 for my video on Deadpool 2. And, um, you know, then I went, when I rewatched Deadpool 2, you know, I, I saw, like, you know, uh, he was he was making references to this movie and it was really funny just some of the references because if, there's a lot of really stupid stuff in the movie it is just it's bad like um i i thought it, i i did kind of enjoy it. i enjoyed it more than it seems other people did um just because i found it kind of interesting seeing wolverine's backstory again i'm not familiar with the comics at all so i don't know anything wolverine's backstory whatever so um, just seeing that um, character development and character arcs don't really match up super well. Like, like Gambit was used and I'm like, and to me it was like, what's the point? Like, why are you guys fighting? Like, this doesn't make any sense um, when Gambit and Wolverine were fighting. And there, there's a lot of stuff in there that just, it was just nonsensical. Um, the next movie, uh, I think, actually, uh, let's see here. I think the next movie on the le I think the next movie that comes up uh, in release order is The Last Stand. I actually watched the Wolver after watching X Men Origins Wolverine. I watched the Wolverine, and then I watched uh, X Men First Class. But I think X Men First Class comes first. So I'm going to talk about that in one next. Um, so First Class, I actually really this is this is one that that really just topped the chart. It was like wow, this is actually pretty good, you know, compared to all the other movies that I've, that I'd seen so far up to that point. I was like, this one's really good. I like this one. Um, you're showing Magneto and Professor X's origin. You get Mystique's origin. You get um, Beast's origin. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of things where I was just like, what? You know, at first. But then as, as the movie progressed, they explained it. And I was like, oh, okay. Because, like, like, for instance, Beast just had the, the like, weird claw, hand, like, the, the weird hands for his feet. And I was like, that's his ability? What? I'm like, I thought Beast was like blue and furry and everything. But then later that happens and I was like, oh, I see how that works, you know? So, um, you know, so they had some, and then they, of course, they introduced more mutants into the, into the mix. Um, some interesting ones. And I kind of like what they did, especially since it's all 1960s. Um, so this one was kind of a fun one. And it also has some explanations and is the only one that is, that can stay in the timeline without really screwing stuff up. I think it's really hard to tell at this point. Um, the next one up is the Wolverine. Uh, the Wolverine. I just didn't really like this one. Not entirely sure why. Um, yeah, I didn't. 
maybe it was the whole plot and everything like that. The plot didn't really make too much sense. Um, you know, I, like, what, like how does Wolverine remember the bombings of, you know, Hiroshima? I think that's the one. It's Hiroshima, I think. Yeah, where he met the the Japanese guy and he saved his life. And now the Japanese guy wants to repay him by stealing his power. It's like thanks like like you like you're 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 really grateful to this guy but like you want to take his power now because you want to be immortal now like okay um okay uh that's wow that's you know not very a thankful thing to do um and then you have like some of these plot points just really did just didn't make a lot of sense and then, you know, it's like, okay, it was an interesting choice that, you know, taking off his adamantium claws, that's an interesting choice, but I guess really only interesting if they stuck with it later on. But of course, like, they can't make that kind of changes, you know, because the next, very next movie, uh, I believe was Days of Future Past, and he's back again. So who knows, you know, like it teases Days of Future Past at the end of that, but Obviously, that tease doesn't even make any sense, of, even when you're watching the movie, uh, the Days of Future Past movie. And on top of that, like, how does, how is Xavier, Charles Xavier there? I think they explained that in The Last Stand, sort of. Maybe I just missed the post credit scene or something like that, where he transfers consciousness into another dude. And then he just projects himself or something. I don't know. Whatever. Whatever weird nonsense that's going on there. I don't, I don't really know. But, like, that movie was just... Uh, yeah, it was. I didn't really care for it. It wasn't as bad as X Men Origins Wolverine, but it was definitely the. It was definitely towards the lowest end of the, on the list. Uh, the next movie that came out is uh, Days of Future Past. This one I had seen bits and pieces of. I remember seeing like there's probably a decent chunk of this movie I'd seen. Didn't understand anything that was going on because I didn't know anything that was like any of the mechanics or anything like that. I was probably about 14, 15 years old when it um, when I saw it, and really didn't know anything about it. So uh, this was really a very much a first viewing for me, even though I had seen some bits and pieces and kind of knew some of the things that happened. Um, and this one definitely immediately hit the top of my list. Um, this like it has a standout story that you remember, you know, um, going back into into the past from the future with all the Sentinels and everything coming down. Um, and so that, so that one, like it really stood out the time travel, them going back to the 1970s and even remembering like, Hey, you know, X-Men origins Wolverine that takes place late seventies, early eighties, somewhere around there. And it's like, Hey, this takes place in say 73. So they have Wolverine without his adamantium claws. It's like, cool. Okay. Great. You know, you, you, you paid attention to that. Um, you know, you using the cast from, um, from X-Men First Class, you know, uh, so you continue that down that road. And uh, yeah, even even Professor X, you know, where he's uh, like, he's given up his abilities and, you know, he's just like, the professor doesn't exist anymore. Um, even though they've done, they did that, it really, it didn't really feel out of character. It felt like an ex, like an added extra characterization. Um, and it really kind of felt it felt cool, you know, it was it was cool, you know, the way they did everything was really good. This is definitely one of the best, and if it wasn't for Logan, probably my top movie. Um, but let's go on to X-Men Apocalypse. I actually didn't hate this one nearly as much as anybody else. I actually really enjoyed this one. This is, uh, this, this one is just, just under Days of Future Past for me. Um, these more modern ones, so like 2014 is, I think is when Days of Future Past came out, and 2016 is when Apocalypse came out. And so, like these, like these movies, are like now in the middle of um, the MCU being out, and so they that their production value is so much better because they they know from the MCU you can do really good production right now. They've learned lessons from Marvel, and so these movies, I think, I think X Men Apocalypse is actually pretty cool. Definitely one of the top ones for me personally. Um, I don't really get all of the X-Men Apocalypse hate. Um, this is actually one I had watched before 
didn't really care for it, and upon rewatch, I actually really did like it. So this one is definitely up there for me in um, X-Men movies. Um, and then the next one that came out is Logan, which I had seen before. I think I saw it a, a couple of years ago. But now that I've had all of the other movies as like background, re-watching Logan, it was a lot better than it was the first time I watched it. Very much enjoyed it. And you know, having not really ha known much about Charles Xavier and Logan and like any of those characters, having seen all, the, all those previous movies and now you're at Logan, it definitely worked so much better. And the writing on this movie is probably some of the best. I mean, it's definitely the best um, out of the X-Men movies. Um, it really, really works. Um, the next movie is Dark Phoenix. <sighs> And this was the worst for me. This was worse than X-Men Origins Wolverine to me. And the reason I say that is just, firstly, they already did a Dark Phoenix story. And so this time, the Dark... I don't like what they did with this Dark Phoenix story. Um, I don't. I think it was a lot worse than it was in X-Men The Last Stand. And a lot of people didn't really like what they did in The Last Stand, so... Um, you know, I like that's it's like you somehow made a full dedicated Dark Phoenix story and you did it worse. Great, you know. Um, Charles Xavier comes off as a bit of a dick, and it's like, what? Like, what? Like, his whole character has just been basically just com completely altered. Um, so that now he's just now he now he's just altering people's memories just to you know remove some pain. It's like, dude, like, that's like kind of a dick move because like in you know at least the last stand when he when he was talking about he did it he was like hey this is the really destructive force that's in the back of her mind if 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 we don't control if we don't contain it this kills everybody and it basically was getting there you know like in the last stand versus like so he really kind of seemed a lot more justified it's like okay maybe we should have we tried to integrate this into her personality so she can control it yes but on the other hand he was kind of justified in doing that because when it came out it was killing a lot of people and then on the other side of things um you know gene gray goes to magneto in the last hand and in dark phoenix phoenix but in dark phoenix Magneto rejects her, and then in the last stand, Magneto accepts her. You know, <laughs> you know she's like, like, like Magneto's characterization in, um, in Dark Phoenix just I don't think is consistent at all. Um, a lot of the characters I just don't like. A lot of the characters seem to really act out of character, and that was really the big problem for me because you know I I see, you know, like Beast like just. I'm like, what's going on? Like a lot of these characters, I'm just like, what is going on here? Like, what are these characters now? Like, what happened, you know? Um, so a lot of that, and then there's just the story, like what the heck is up with the aliens? I don't know, you know, what, like, what are we do? Like, like, what are these aliens? What, what are they doing? Why are they doing this? And, um, you know, like the dark Phoenix force was inside Jean Grey during X-Men Apocalypse, but now it's not here. And in X Men: The Last Stand, she always had it, so it wasn't just something, you know, that that you know that infected her or whatever. And um, I think, like they what they did in The Last Stand, where it's like it was always a part of her and just you know whatever, was a much cooler thing than. And I don't know what's more closer to the comics because I've never read the comics, so I'm just going based off of what I've seen. So um, it it does a totally different Dark Phoenix story, but then. I don't think it does a better version. I think it does a worse version of the Dark Phoenix story. So, yeah. And all of that goes to say, I don't really like Dark Phoenix at all. I think it's the worst of the X-Men movies. Um, and then now let's talk about the Deadpool movies because I've seen the Deadpool movies already. I've seen, um, I've seen them, you know, I watched them years and years ago. Um, I'm rewatched them multiple times. I rewatched them um, with all the other X-Men movies for, uh, I did a couple of Deadpool discussion videos with a friend who watched them for the very first time. And these movies, I just love these movies, man. 
Like these are very different movies. Um, they're co they're more comedies. Uh, the first one is more a bit more of a revenge movie, uh, revenge movie with revenge story with a love story mixed into it. Um, told in a non-linear sense, and it's very it's a very straightforward movie. Nothing too nothing too crazy, and I love how it does um, the non-linear storytelling. And it's and I and I, I'm a sucker for pretty simplistic stories. Uh, if you can do a really simplistic story, but then execute it really well, that's like, I just, I love that. I absolutely love that. You like really complex stories that are done well and really simple stories that are done really well. Those can both be really fantastic things. You know, um, I'm great. I, I love seeing like really complex movies that make you think, you know, that really kind of twist your brain. I really enjoy Tenet. You know, that's a movie that's like, like really breaks your brain and it's a lot of people just come out of that confused but um but i also love just a very simplistic story that just keeps it really simple but then the execution is they because they focus all of their attention on the execution and that can go phenomenally so that's why i love deadpool and deadpool 2 it cranks it up with um with better jokes uh more comedy better action but to me, it really kind of comes, comes down a little bit because it's not as simple of a story uh, like Deadpool was, but also it tries to go for an emotional beat. It tries to go more emotional and it really falls flat in that area. So that's why it comes down a little bit, a little bit lower for me there. But those, the Deadpool movies, I love the Deadpool movies. I've seen, you know, um, they're ones that I'm a lot more familiar with. I think Deadpool 2 was my first uh, rated R movie in theaters. So like it's I've like said like so I that was the one that was really the only X-Men movie I saw in theaters until Deadpool and Wolverine but uh yeah so those that's my thoughts on all of the X-Men movies um my th I'd like to actually kind of talk about the timeline a little bit here for a minute um because I think it's in, it's, it's kind of interesting because they, they 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 do a lot of different things like you know a lot of people say oh the timeline's all screwed up but um, I'd like to kind of talk, think, you know, kind of talk through, I think if you separate them all into, I think, including this, the Deadpool, the Deadpool movies, six timelines, if you separate them all out into six timelines, I think you can make it work. So here are the different ones. Okay. So timeline number one, you've got X-Men, X-Men or X2 and X-Men, the last stand, and then the Wolverine. Those, all those four are one timeline, just those four all in one timeline. Um, obviously, X, the, the original trilogy all goes together because they don't really contradict each other at all. They don't really mess around with the time enough to mess with the timeline. And then you have the Wolverine, um, which, you know, you know that takes place after The Last Stand because um, Logan is pining after Jean Grey that he's had this obsession with. Um, so those, all those four movies can get, you know, pulled off into one timeline. And then timeline number two um, starts off with, actually, I think you could probably put first class in all the timelines, I guess, if you wanted to, I guess, uh, whatever. Um, uh, so first class, uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine and Days of Future Past is timeline number two. Um, so X-Men er, first class, obviously, it starts in 1960-something. Um, and then you have X-Men Origins Wolverine. And then you have Days of Future Past. Yeah, because um, the reason why X-Men Origins Wolverine doesn't fit in the first timeline is because Sabretooth is Wolverine's brother, but then they don't, like, it doesn't really fit in, like, with the, like, X-Men, like, what happens in the first X-Men movie. So... That doesn't really quite fit together, so I so I separated X Men Origins Wolverine um, from that timeline. It goes within uh, First Class and then Days of Future Past because Days of Future Past then splits the timeline um, in 1973. Um, so timeline number three is a branch off of timeline number two, in which case um, you know so it's got part of. Days of Future Past, like the earlier bits of Days of Future Past is what happens in uh, timeline number three. That's the branching timeline. And then you have X-Men Apocalypse in there as well. 
Now, Dark Phoenix doesn't really fit in here. Actually, I think you, actually you can put Dark Phoenix in here. So I guess you can um, you can kind of shuffle things around a bit, I guess, if you want. But I guess Dark Phoenix can go in there because um, X Men X Two and The Last Stand aren't going to be in this timeline. So um, so you don't have to worry about any of that. Logan has got his own timeline. I think they even I think they even even the director said like. Uh, Logan is in its own time, his own timeline. So um, that one is just kind of separated off from everything. And then the Deadpool movies, like they're definitely not connected to any of the other X Men movies. So, um, and I like I don't see any way that Deadpool, the Deadpool movies could fit. Um, and then X Men Origins Wolverine gets wiped from the diverging timeline, timeline number three. So I guess there would just be five. Uh, I was putting Dark Phoenix in its own timeline, just be like, yeah, I'm just gonna. And it, that would explain better some of the things that happens in Dark Phoenix. Like some of the characters is like, well, they're just alternate versions of that character. So you can just kind of kind of wipe Dark Phoenix under the rug, give it its own timeline. Just like, you don't need to be part of our canon. <laughs> so you, you, you can kind of mess around with the time. Like to me, it's like, hey, if you um, mess around like that. And then also that kind of would explain why you have the different looking actors you know, in the different movies, because you can't put X-Men X2 and The Last Stand in with, um, you know, X-Men Apocalypse. That just doesn't work. Um, obviously, I mean, they, they do it as a diverging timeline because, you know, that um, X-Men Apocalypse happens in the 80s, Dark Phoenix happens in the 90s. And obviously you can't have Dark Phoenix and The Last Stand in the same timeline, but also Days of Future Past, you know, cuts that around a bit. Oh, wait, no, there's a reason why Dark Phoenix can, can't be in the diverging timeline. And that's because um, if the diverging timeline happens with Days of Future Past, you go back to 1973, but then Wolverine comes back in, 19, uh, in 2023 when that movie is supposed to take place. And, in that, and when he's back, Charles Xavier is teaching the school and Jean Grey is there, and Cyclops is there, and Mystique is there. So when he, so in, at the end of Days of Future Past, when you have um, Wolverine back at the school, you know, and when he wakes back up in 2023, Dark Phoenix couldn't happen because Jean Grey is still, still around. Mystique is still around, so that also rules out Dark Phoenix. And also, um, you know, Charles Xavier retired at the end of Dark Phoenix, which is kind of weird. Um, so all of that can't be in the same universe either. Um, I guess you could, if you wanted to, you could also put Logan in the same universe as maybe not. No, I don't. Yeah, actually, no, I'm not going to say that's, uh, you can put him in the, with the original trilogy because again, at the end of the last or in the last stand X, you know, Charles Xavier gets exploded and if he is like projecting his like new look or his like his original look um in at the end of the wolverine then by the time you get to logan like that's just not like when he's old and he's not gonna be able to use his abilities and everything like that he's not gonna be able to project um that out there especially considering he has like mental seizures and whatnot and so and when that happens you know people will see who he who he really looks like and that none of that is really going to make a lot of sense. So, um, it's it's really convoluted. Honestly, I think at this point, really just breaking them up into different universes is kind of the best way to look at it. Uh, kind of keep all that in check, or just don't think about the timeline. Um, I think a trick I heard somebody was saying was just like, was just basically like, um, just the last movie is the only one that's at, like when it comes to timeline. Just whatever was in the last movie. That's it. You know, um, so it, it can be all convoluted, all messed up and everything like that. And, you know, it's it is what it is. It's 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 it can be kind of a bit of nonsense and everything like that. But um, that, I think that'll do it for me today. Um, what are your guys's thoughts on the X-Men movies? What are your favorite X-Men movies? What are the ones um, that you disagree with me on what my thoughts are? And uh, also, what do you think of the timeline? You know, do you think do you think I'm right? Is it a little loopy, or uh, you know, maybe maybe there's some things that I'm missing? So let me know down in the comments below, um, and subscribe if you guys want to see more videos talking about you know different franchises and whatnot. Because I've been going through a ton of different franchises. So uh, go ahead and uh, do that, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Ciao.